The main thing for me is to observe how the global voices community changes, and like, and I think it had, it has passed a very, um, like, very crucial point in many community online communities' life, uh, and it's point then you know like then like the leaders, the initial leaders, you know, like move on and go somewhere else uh, and like do, do stuff. But and then it just the community would die. But not here. We can definitely see a lot of new faces and um, the, uh, a lot of new people joining and like the interest is growing. But also on a personal side, uh, networking is really important for me to meet new friends, to find out about uh, old, new and old friends, to find out about the new projects that appear, to exchange, you know, certain tips, uh, tools uh, that people use. I don't know, but I just found out, for example, that there are like templates for video editing that I had no idea about. You know, like th th that mm, that there are like uh, several companies that can host uh, certain initiatives, and for sure, it's like would be a secure hosting. You know, with all the all the stuff involved. I didn't know. I mean, like I, I knew about uh, some of the like RSF or. Freedom House, but I didn't know that there were like, like a number of organizations, even more, that do things like this. This new tool, uh, social network censorship, that was just presented. As the internet evolves, I mean, like the security becomes a growing issue. I mean, like it was not a, such a big issue, um, uh, like let's say four years ago. But even in 2010 summit, uh, there was already like there was a big session uh, with YouTube and you, how YouTube explained the removal policy. And I think that mm, because we can see that, you know, like in 2010 it was before the Arab Spring uh, and uh, all the Occupy movements and so on. But And we see that w what people do online can be both dangerous uh, and political and at the same time empowering. And obviously, uh, in order to strengthen the voice of the citizens, uh, uh, there should be tools, there should be knowledge uh, about uh, about how to uh, be secure online, I think. Do you feel less or more connected since 2010 with the global community? Well, I think more. I mean, because uh, it turned, like, the last time it was my first summit, I had no idea what Global Voices is about and I met all these people and it was a huge shock for me uh, and uh, right now and because you know like, like okay Global Voices you know like one other stuff from the West you know everyone is happy and then I come and <laughs> everyone exactly is happy <laughs> and some people are like wow that's a, such a cool thing and um, and right now I'm coming here and I can see like the people I know and how they and they also evolved with their own projects and for example I don't know um, I remember myself for example we were in Amsterdam with Sami Ben Garbia in I guess it was September 2010 so before the Tunisian events and stuff and you know like we were just having fun and after that I can see like wow the Tunisia has changed, also with the help of the bloggers and the information spread in line, and Sami was among those who kind of uh, really played an important role in this. And I felt, wow, that's a historical moment. And uh, speaking of connectivity, I definitely, and right now I'm having a project in ICT, and I really wanted to to uh, use all the best practices Global Voices does and I'm sure that a lot of people uh, actually uh, also uh, trend broadcast uh, their best practices they found out through Global Voices and uh, these uh, like net network ties are like strengthening themselves so it's I think yeah I, th I feel more connected now. Do you feel optimistic? Or? I feel very optimistic. I mean, uh, the, uh, I think that uh, Global Voices managed, uh, when I said about this critical point, managed to build a sustainable structure that, uh, and that is replicable and it already replicates. Um, 
itself in uh, smaller communities all around the world. Um, so uh, I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm feeling very optimistic about global voices, but I'm not so optimistic about the internet itself. Yeah, it, it could be, uh, I mean, like, given the trends and like uh, the national governments, uh, the certain corporations that want to uh, change the internet and change the internet to something that uh, we're not used to so uh, like the, this bring the, this gives a lot of reasons to be pessimistic yeah but but as for global voices i think that it's that's definitely not nothing to fear about and are you talking about that the internet will be like, owned by certain people? Is that your fear? Or uh, well, fear? I, well, what I, I'm really afraid of fragmentation of the internet. Sorry, can you say that again? I'm the motorcycle. Yeah. I'm really afraid of the fragmentation of the internet uh, because uh, on one hand uh, like governments want to and the, like the trend like to more control the internet because they're really afraid of it on the other hand uh, there are like c local corporations that uh, would be happy uh, for example if uh, if the uh, like such big competitors like Google and Facebook could be ruled out by the regulation. Imagine, I mean, like for a small uh, country-wide uh, operator of a social network, whatever the like. So as soon as they block Facebook, the, everyone has to use their own software. So there is also like a, a, uh, an actor who would support the national governments in this isolationism, and I believe these that these the. They call it the Balkanization, but I guess it's a bad term because you know, like mo like people from the Balkans are kind of a very touchy about it. I I call it isolationism and fragmentation. And um, yesterday we were talking about it, and the guy said like, well, like okay, but like wouldn't it be shooting uh, into your own foot uh, uh, if you iso I make your own like non-connected uh, segment of the internet? And I said, well, like the point is that Russia and like many other countries had uh, actually had these cycles of openness and closeness, like some more, some less, but for example, Russia, you know, like last, uh, I don't know, starting I think, from the 20s, it was a pretty closed system. And, you know, and these traditions are being revived and, you know, like what, what kinds of uh, different uh, populistic movements would promote this kind of isolationism. So I, I think it's a really uh, very uh, scary perspective um, that that you know like that is not good. And th this is why I mean the initiatives be aimed on the universality and like broader spread of, and like translation and broader spread of information, certain common goals and ide ideals are important and this is why Global Voices is so important. Is there any prepayment anywhere?